Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the JW Weatherman Show. Uh, today's going to be really fun. Uh, this is another uh, conversation with the Cypherpunk U alumni, uh, John. And uh, John was actually awesome. He he fixed a ton of the audio issues uh, in the in the course lectures. Um, so he is uh, he's in in my uh, I'm in his debt of gratitude. But um, today what we're going to be talking about is some stem cell therapy research. Uh, it's a pretty interesting topic. I don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, I'm very interested to talk to John about it and uh, also in the context of all the different ways the government has destroyed our access to all kinds of services, including decent medical care. Um, but before we get started, um, if you have any interest in Bitcoin, economics, uh, cryptocurrencies in general, uh, check out the course that John took. Uh, it's at jwweatherman.com forward slash class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, has all the details. And uh, it's been a really great experience for everybody involved so far. Nobody's complained. Uh, so, so far we have 100% uh, satisfaction rate. I'm sure that won't last forever. But, uh, but the, the guys that have taken the class are really interesting characters, uh, including, as you're going to see, John, with all kinds of interesting things to say. And it's really nice to be able to, um, especially if you're in Bitcoin, to be able to have conversations with smart people where the baseline's already covered, right? You don't have to go back and talk about the 101 stuff constantly. So, um, and that's the purpose of the class. Get us up to speed, kind of create an environment where we can all hang out and talk about things that are a little more nuanced and interesting. So. Anyway, check that out. And uh, yeah, what we're talking about is stem cells. So uh, John, can you kind of, you know, give us an introduction overview um, about uh, about the topic? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think there was like a, there's probably a big question about um, a, about stem cells throughout the early or mid 2000s and then early, early aughts or 20 or 2010s, however you say it now. But uh, the, the whole debate was really raging around um, where do you get stem cells from? And I think this is kind of the transhumanist uh, moral, ethical uh, debate that a lot of people are uncomfortable having or didn't want to have. And they, uh, a lot, they think a lot of the, I think a lot of the government regulation comes around that. Really, it goes what where we've ended up now, and where where it starts at is really with Dolly the sheep. And Dolly the sheep was 1996. That's when they cloned it, and everybody panicked. I mean, they had uh, at least in the United States, they had Republicans, they had Democrats. The even Bill Clinton wrote his own legislation to try to ban human cloning, and it all just kind of got jumbled. Some states banned it. The federal government never got anything through, and then the FDA just kind of stepped in and said, "Hey, we uh, we can regulate all of it." and it's all banned and that's it you get into stem cells now and uh the state of california they wanted to uh, to really prove that they could harvest fetal tissue aborted babies turn that tissue into stem cells they spent it like two billion dollars in taxpayer dollars turns out it didn't work it all turns into cancer cells what they found works was either your own bone marrow which um if you're older is the quality degrades or umbilical cord blood and I think that that's that that's what that's what I'm going to be talking about, and that's what we were, had experience with, um, and where that comes into Dolly, it butts into Dolly the sheep. Basically, the the treatment we went and we got out in Panama was umbilical cord blood, and they had separated just the stem cells out of it, so that there's no other byproducts in it. But if you do that, the dosage is really low. So then they do what's called cellular expansion, but it's basically cloning to create these huge, super, super high doses of stem cells that they give you. And uh, the results, the, the, the results are just absolutely incredible. So, and, and I mean, so that's, that's, uh, a, that's an overview, I guess. Yeah, no, that's great, man. And uh, when you first reach out, and said you wanted to talk about this. The the only thing that I feel like I've had exposure to in the last year was Joe Rogan when he had um, uh, what's his name Mel Gibson on, and I I think I just caught a clip of that. But it, is that the same uh, process? Because I'm sure a lot of people, even though I only caught a little bit of it, they've heard the whole interview. It was actually this, the same clinic, and we had been we had been talking to them about two or three months prior to that, and like by the time we we get down there. And everything's going on. They're just they're packed. It's almost like a assembly line of people coming in. Um, yeah. So it's the it's the same same people, same process. Um, 
I had a fam another family member that did stem cells in the United States with a US FDA approved product and it has a bunch of other things in it like uh, blood, the actual blood from the, from the sample and stuff like that. And he had a bunch of really adverse reactions and like localized pain and stuff like that. And also the cell count dosage was really low. So the fact that the government won't let you do the expanded expanding cells and just pure cells is is really an impediment to a lot of people's health obviously so because because cloning is banned you cannot take cells and put them on a petri dish and let them replicate i mean what how how the <laughs> heck that? Yeah. exactly yeah and, and, and that's the that, that's kind of the insanity of the state right on one hand you could just take a you know you could take a whole bunch of cells with a bunch of other pollutants in it and you can just inject that. That's fine. Go ahead and try it. But if you take those same cells and then you duplicate them, oh, you, you can't administer that because that's cloning. And so, so you, could, I, you could I, take like you could take a baby, like a five month old baby, throw it through a blender and then inject that in your body. But if you take the stem cells from a, a, a healthy, happy baby umbilical cord that's going to be thrown away, you put them in an environment where they'll they'll they naturally replicate. Right. Just stems I mean, um, just like all human cells yeah yeah i mean it's basically they have to they have to feed them proteins and stuff like that so that they replicate in the in the petri dish of course yeah but that's that's categorized as cloning that's categorized categorized as cloning and so you can't <clears throat> that and that falls under uh, a biologic which means the fda has just said outright no crazy and um i, I, I wish uh, I, I could say i was completely shocked <laughs> exactly. Um, the current I'm I'm I my my in my trade business uh, for a long time was an e-cigarette business, and so we have a lot of experience reading the tea leaves from the FDA. And people have a lot of good feelings about this current FDA commissioner that he might do something differently. But really, you, you know, this is not the way that our government should be run in the first place. Like we should have laws, you know, through the Congress that say this is legal, and then you go and do this. We're really in this kind of rule by regulatory fiat, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And, and a lot of sick people are hoping that, you know, maybe this will become more widely accessible in the United States because it, the trip down to Panama, it, it, it's not, it's not easy to get down from the U S. So, um, it, just hoping that, uh, he's going to change his mind tomorrow and more people are going to be able to do it. It's, it, it's not, it's not a reasonable expe expectation at all. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, I, the, the the one of the things that I'm thinking is that I know drugs in Panama is kind of a bad idea. It's really hard to get a hold of. Like if you just go to a random pharmacy in somewhere in South America, the chances that you get a drug that is not the drug you're paying for is a lot higher than it is in the U.S. because of you know basically because we have a lot more um, we have a lot more people that are going to be outraged and pissed off and uh, uh, you know sue if they end up with a drug that is not. Uh, what they paid for. Um, how how did I mean? How does that work? Obviously, you and Mel Gibson aren't idiots. Um, how did you guys work through that and kind of decide that it was it was either worth the risk or not as big of a risk? Or you know, how do you know that you're actually getting what you pay for in Panama? Since I know right. you don't if you buy an antibiotic. Right. Um, Panama is a little bit. Panama is actually a little bit better than like say you know Baja California or something like that. It, the uh, the skyline in Panama City dwarfs San Francisco. It's you know there's just no comparison. So, but as far as that, the guy the guy who founded the uh, the, the the clinic is an American. He's he's a doctor. He's written about 14 different research papers specifically on this. Um, he's done as much as he could clinical trials on this with people who were really 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 sick. I think you've seen that um, right to try bill. They had kind of an edge case exception for people who were just incredibly ill that the FDA was was making exceptions for, and they had really good results with it. So, it, it, as far as that that goes, like that, you know, somebody who's somebody who who has the uh, uh, who has the credibility behind them uh, you, uh, that they they're writing papers and that they're dedicated to doing this. That was our 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 best hope. Now he's done this as like the last fifteen years of his of his career. A lot of the stem cell clinics in the United States, they're like homeopaths or plastic surgeons. And then they go, oh, I can get this FDA approved stem cell product. I'm now going to start injecting people with stem cells. And I think if you do look up some news stories from last year, there's people in the U.S. going to these clinics and they're being blinded and 
all you know, graft versus host disease, really, really, really horrible stuff, which is, so it's really weird that the FDA has kind of been like, oh, well, this product's okay, but it's actually, but in any, any, anybody with a med medical degree can use it. They don't know how to use it. They misadminister it and they make, they hurt a bunch of people, but the stuff that's actually, you know, really won't harm you is completely banned. It, is, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it kind of does make sense in the, in the, as you were talking about it, I'm thinking, okay, there's a difference between going to a pharmacy at some random place in Panama and grabbing, you know, a bottle of pills and expecting that that entire supply chain is functional and that the pharmacist isn't, you know, you know, that, that he's buying it from the most reputable source. There's a big difference between that and going to Mel Gibson's doctor. The guy has got a whole <laughs> different, you know, business model and his reputation is super, super valuable. And uh, I imagine they're charging, you know, a pretty penny for every service and they don't, you know, they, they're, I mean, uh, so the market has incentivized to provide them something that's high quality. And then you contrast that with what's going on with the government where they're, they're approving things that suck in the United States. They're not approving things that are good. Um, so maybe it's just a really good picture of the free market functioning. And, uh, um, you know, that's what you got to look towards. Well, that, that's the thing is that the product in Panama is actually, uh, it's, it's, it's about one sixth the price per, per dosage. Right. So my other family member who went to a clinic in LA and had a homeopath give him stem cells, he paid, he paid about the same price. Actually he paid a little bit more about $28,000 for about a million, a million and a half cells dosage. Um, with the hotel and the flights and all, all in, I think we were at about 26,000 going to Panama and uh, she got 120 million cells, just pure out, like outright the clone stem cells. So I think because each one of those samples for the U S approved product has to be collected individually, whereas this guy can just clone him. His, I, I believe his cost per unit is probably cheaper than the with than the FDA approved drug is because he has the, the one that works. He doesn't have to go up, keep collecting samples for it. He just keeps cloning it. Right. right. So he's got a manufacturing process and they're trying, that's just far more efficient uh, and high right. quality. So are there any, uh, are there any like negative side effects of uh, stem cells themselves? I mean, obviously if you end up with blood or other contaminants, which, you know, apparently this guy's able to filter out, um, that you could have graft versus host or something. Are there of the stem cells, you know, the active ingredient that we're shooting for, which is just stem cells. Is there any, any ways that that goes bad? Uh, n there's been no, as far as these, the umbilical, the purified stem cells, there's been absolutely no, no bad results that they've published so far, which is, which is really interesting. Now, keep in mind all of it, this is, you know, they need to allow him to do more in these doctors with this product, more studies in the U S so we'll actually know. But I mean, um, my wife, it, she was, uh, she has Hashimoto's disease, which is like a, a thyroid based kind of in, uh, autoimmune disease. I wasn't able to hold her hand for about three years, like barely any pressure on her hand and it would hurt. And probably the second day uh, of treatment, I'm laying in bed and I squeeze her hand and she didn't flinch. And it was just, it was a complete shock to both of us. And it was just, it was like that. And ever since then she's put on weight, she's gotten better. It's it, really, really, really surprised by the, the, the effects. Um, I wish I could say more about like, yes, there is, you know, some kind of downside, but I haven't been able to see, to see any. And there's studies that they've done where Children who are getting cancer treatment, they'll start developing graft versus host disease, um, and they're now giving them stem cells to stop the graft versus host disease. This this specific stem wow. cell product. So yeah, yeah, man. Uh, start talking about kids with cancer, and I, you just you, I, I get into uh, my murderous uh, rage. <laughs> uh, this is, it's uh, it's unbelievable the way that uh, the the the. Sh the amount of brazenness that uh, these government officials have when they're regulating this stuff and uh, all the socialists supporting this sort of nonsense. Uh, it doesn't matter when you point out stuff like this, that there's actually kids in hospitals right now that, that could have access to this treatment. We have no, no reason not to try it. Um, no reason at least not to do more trials, except some moron decided that it was sort of cloning like to let these cells replicate. Um, 
Right. It's, it's unreal. So what are the sort of things that, uh, I mean, that that's, that's incredible about your wife. I definitely want to hear more about that, but what are the, in general, sort of the things that get treated with stem cells? Like, what do they do? The, you drop a bunch of stem cells in somebody's bloodstream. What, what happens? Right. So basically they, they, they start absorbing it into the rest of the tissue and, um, <clears throat> uh, they, they increase the speed of cell replication and aging is just your rate of cell replication slowing. I mean, that's, that's basically it. And these young stem cells, they, you know, they find a, a place and they go, I'll become a skin, skin cell. And another one says, I'll become a heart cell. And, um, they basically, it's like starting at a newborn age grade of cells. So they start absorbing into the body and a lot of things that go wrong with aging autoimmune disorders included. Um, just basically it, they, they, this, your cells stop misbehaving, I guess is the best way to say it. Whatever's causing the disease from like, you know, aging and degeneration, that's, that's what stops. Weird, weird. Okay. So your, your wife's condition in particular was, was it autoimmune? Yeah. And it was something, it was something she had been fighting like, kind of off and on for a long time, but she didn't really know. And a place that we lived in, we had really bad black mold poisoning. We didn't know it for like a year and a half. She got just deathly ill. And then it was, you know, Kaiser, this, you know, specialist doctor, that specialist doctor, homeopaths, we'd been through the ringer. And uh, and finally they go, oh, well, it's, you know, it's basically your, uh, your immune system won't work and your thyroid's not working. And so, um, you know, you're not going to be able to eat, you're not going to be able to eat like, you know, 75% of the regular food groups and, you know, you can't keep on waiting, just all these things and your hair is going to fall out and, you know, just, just expect it. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some thyroid drugs and hopefully you can, you can manage it. And uh, that just, she was, she was a, she was a college athlete, soccer player. She was, you know, she worked with me in our business. She was the absolute rock star of our business and just bouncing off the walls with energy every day. And just to see her, basically bed bound for weeks at a time was just heartbreaking. And so I was on the computer every day, just doing hours and hours and hours and hours of research to say, you know, what, what, what can we do here? Like to, you know, to turn this around because yeah, I, I think you're married too, right? GW? If you're, if your wife yep. was bed bound, you, yeah, you would, you oh, know, totally. nothing would stop you. And yeah, so yeah, that's kind of, yeah but, I mean, in general, this topic really, um, really pisses me off because we're all like, if we're not dealing with it now, we've dealt with it in the past, like, and we're going to be dealing with it. Right. If, especially if we're, if we're, uh, getting up there in years, um, it's just a matter of time, but we all have somebody that's really close to us that, um, you know, you, you no, nobody's more than a degree of separation between somebody that's recently died or somebody that's going to die soon. And, uh, and this is what, what the free market is about is trying to beat back, you know, mother nature from tearing our heads off. And, uh, the way that we do that is through, you know, free exchange in the economy. And in the United States, it's just been unbelievable to watch things fall apart. Um, like I had to, uh, I had to go to the hospital, uh, maybe this was about a year ago and, uh, had some blood draw and I found out that they, they don't have phlebotomists anymore. Like the, the nurses that specialize in drawing blood, that job doesn't exist in the state that I'm in anymore, or at, at least in the, you know, the, the area that I'm in, they just completely got rid of that. So what that meant was, you know, I had a nurse that, uh, that doesn't specialize in blood draws drawing my blood. And, you know, I have huge veins. I'm a pretty big guy and she still had a hard time with it. Um, so even in little things, you know, as, as the, <laughs> the economy and medicine is just falling apart more and more, it's awful. But in your situation, uh, where you have a wife that is just suffering, uh, really, really bad. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if you want to create terrorists, like hurt people's family, right? Like <laughs> yeah, go drop bombs much. on people in Yemen or keep me from getting access to decent medical care. Like I'll, I'll lose my mind uh, if I'm a normal man. No, that's uh, what it, that's what it felt like. Yeah. Cause I was, you know, I was lined up at the, at the clinic or, or at Kaiser, or, you know, which runs these huge mega corporate hospitals. So I was, you know, lined up there in the morning early to, you know, talk to her doctors, Hey, this isn't working. This isn't working. What can we do? And that kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, a few more years of that. And, if I had really had to see her suffer like that, I mean, Lord only knows. But. Yeah. I mean, if, if you found out that it was at the hands of a bureaucrat, right. And right. like, if you, if you knew that there was a cure 
and you didn't have the $26,000, even though you've been paying for medical insurance for all these years, uh, because somebody in the FDA has decided this was cloning like that, that. You're not, you know, hopefully we all have enough self-control to realize what's productive and not productive. But the point is, is that, that that can make anybody crazy to know that the only thing standing between them and a cure, or at least a treatment that has a high likelihood of success or, or a um, small likelihood of success. The only thing preventing that is some government bureaucrat. That's that's a recipe for some really bad days for all of us. So um, absolutely, absolutely. And I think at this point it should be an outrage already because they, so you so twenty six thousand dollars cash. That's like you know that's that's pretty expensive. But you look at the cost of other treatments, right? Um, and the HIV medication is about twenty eight hundred dollars a month. Um, there's a medication that cures hep C out now. And, uh, I think that was $80,000 for a one month supply, but you just take these pills and that's it. It was, it was a really big medical innovation. They're getting paid really well for it, but insurers cover these things. They cover these incredibly expensive medications, you know, and even in the case of HIV, you know, that's like a lifetime of somebody on the insurance, on the insurance. And then you have all these other people that really could benefit from stem cell treatment or like in the course of, of cancer treatment, if they had those stem cells too, probably at the same time, it would, it would greatly improve their odds. And then how much gets spent on end of life care in the United States, especially pharmaceutically, it, it, it's not that much money, especially by your, by your insurer to cover. And so it seems, it seems like a kind of a no brainer. And yeah, at this point it's either, it's just, it's just the state standing in the way. Yeah. I mean, in $26,000, we're talking, that's, that's a, uh, that's a like cottage industry boutique experience, right? Um, yeah. If if this stuff was allowed to be experimented with and worked in the free market, you know, we could probably have uh, you know fifty thousand gallon vats of uh, stem cells being bred, <laughs> and we just, you know, pipe it right in the front door. I'll take a drink of water and coffee in the morning and have a you know shot of stem cells or something. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, you, you hit it on its head. Yeah, if it was industrialized, like especially at an American scale, I'm sure the cost would fall even further. So, so your wife was uh, suffering really bad. How long ago did you guys go down and, uh, and get the treatment? I think we went down in late July. So that would cool. be three about four about four months ago. Yeah. And uh, so obviously it was a dramatic improvement while you guys were down there. Um, did uh, did did it get better after? Or did it get worse? Do you guys think you'll have to go back for for additional treatments? And I mean, overall, how would you care? Obviously, it was better. Is it is it still better? Is it drastically better? Um, or it's, is it? It's it's still better. And so now she's trying to cut back on the thyroid medication, which she's working on. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of aesthetic things that I think people who care about aging would worry about. Like, and I couldn't tell if, you know if this was just us getting into our 30s or her just getting sick. But she started to get a little bit of wrinkles. She like lost a little patch of hair in her eyebrow. Her hair was starting to thin. Um, one month in, the hair that had been gone for almost two years on her eyebrow just completely grew back. The wrinkles disappeared. Her face plumped up. Like her her hair is growing back really full. Her skin's not like flaky. So there's a lot of like, I guess the, the aesthetic things that you can just look, point out and say, yeah, that's obviously, uh, you know, something good. Um, because of the Hashimoto, she had developed sensitivities to um, like gluten and wheat and dairy and all these other things that she couldn't have. She's eating all of those now. Um, she, her, her weight's way up. So I would say, yeah, it's, she's probably about 80% better. Um, would we go back? Uh, probably a hundred percent. Yeah. We're, we're actually, so, we're, we're, we're almost planning on it next year. So she had, um, one of the things that I, I picked up there, I think 2% of the U S population or something like that, um, uh, has a, actually has a gluten allergy. I mean, I don't know if you're in California, like I am 80% <laughs> of everybody has a gluten allergy, but yes. medically 2% of the U S population supposedly does. Um, that's a huge, that's a huge issue. Uh, two percent is huge. I mean, two percent of three hundred million. We're talking about a lot of people that uh, that have allergies to wheat. Are you uh, are you pretty sure she was allergic to it, or you know what? She, how would you categorize it? Was, that? It, it was it was it, it was not something that was before she got really really sick with the Hashimoto's, and then because that it ruins your digestive system. So it just turned out like you know all, all of the different doctors were going to you know year one she's not allergic to gluten at all. By year three, 
they do another allergy allergy panel on her and they're like oh you're allergic to gluten now which is you know it's it was just a progression of the disease and her immune system breaking down as she's gotten better now now she can eat it and everything's fine so i don't know wow. for the people who are actually allergic to gluten like you know not the kombucha socialists but the people who actually have an affliction i don't know if it'll do anything for them i i, can, I, I have no idea right right yeah totally um yeah, it's, it's an interesting possibility, though. That would, that would be a heck of a big market for these guys to go after. <laughs> they, can, they can compete with, uh, yeah, you can just pick up your stem cells at uh, Whole Foods now, um, Trader Joe's, with, the, with your soy latte. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, so she's she's doing well, and you you think you'll go back maybe annually, or uh, what, are you, what are you thinking on those I, I think we'll probably go back um, next year. Um, the big thing that they're – and the reason why I already kind of knew so much about this was 11 years ago, 13, 12 years ago, I was in a really bad car accident. I was working for um, Rico, the document company. And we were doing, a, it was like a, you know, a network as a service kind of deal where um, financial documents could be placed into a, a photocopier and then sent to a centralized server, like within a, a network of facilities. And so I'd have to go out and I'd have to, drive with this little tiny Toyota work truck and wrangle servers. And I was stopped on the 405 one day and somebody just plowed into me at 80 miles an hour. And they wanted to fuse my vertebrae together. Like the discs are gone. I've had like really bad back pain for years. I refuse to take any medication for it or anything. And I've been really, really optimistic for a long time. Hey, something's going to come of this. And so I'll be going back next year. They're going to open up a larger facility that has a, that's next to a hospital or that's inside of a hospital. Because when they do the injections into your back, sometimes you you'll pass out or you might seize or like you be, just because of the positioning of the needle, how close it is to your spine. So I'm definitely going back or to um to try to re, re regenerate torn disc material, and we'll probably go back for her too, just to see if that there's a you know eighty to ninety, eighty to hundred kind of push. Wow! Wow! Cool! Cool! So you're not going back for her. Uh, because it's it's you're expecting it to wear off. You just think you could get even more, you know, like you're you're eighty percent recovered. You think you can get more out of it, um, yeah. but not because it's it's uh, wearing off, so to speak. No, no. The, basically, all the improvement that was made is is pretty much stayed permanent. So it wasn't like kind of like a temporary thing. It's you know, it's basically got her back to this level where she's back to life and out playing with her nieces and all this other stuff, and so. And is she uh, is she able to to work now? Um, is, like, does she have that much energy, or is it like eh, not quite there? But at least her quality of life is much better. I think yeah, I think she's close to to being able to work. I think she, I, I know she one hundred percent wants to work. Um, she she was she's like a rainmaker sales on the phone, and so I think she just hasn't been on that ridden that bike for so long. That she's still a little scared of the phone, but you know, it, otherwise, like she's doing stuff like um cooking and around the house and out driving and running errands and stuff like that so i I, awesome. I think she's yeah i think when she gets her confidence back she'll be uh yeah she'll be back to work yeah she's physically capable now whereas before she was she actually bed bound before you guys went down or was it like uh, she would have like yeah pretty much or like periods um it was like seven to nine weeks in bed and three or four days out wow and how, and, I mean, and, not, and not like not like she couldn't get out to a bed to go to the restroom, but like going to the kitchen or leaving the house, it was just a that was a non, that was a non-starter. Yeah, and just uh, for anybody that's that's thinking like, oh, that you know maybe this is the homeopathic thing. Like, there there is there have been a, a lot of studies done that show that stem cells help. So like the active ingredient has already been shown to address a lot of different cases. The main issue is just the amount of stem cells that you can get in the United States and the purity is far less than you can get in Panama. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much exactly right. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of, a lot of the homeopathic doctors are offering the American product now too, but it's, it's way less potent and, uh, and there's bad side effects to it. Yep. Yep. Cause homeopaths are idiots and uh, they wouldn't offer it <laughs> if it wasn't stupid. Yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Water has memory. Look, look that up. If you don't know anything about homeopathy, just search for water has memory and you're going to go down a rabbit hole. That's going to reveal how stupid 
what I don't know. 0.1 percent of the population is just absolutely insane, and everybody that goes to homeopaths is just completely bonkers. Uh, man, yeah, Trader Joe's homeopathic medicine, freaking unbelievable. Um, all right, so so after she got back, did she have any more periods where she was stuck in bed, or has it been you know uh, just much better? Or um, it's it's been it's been much better, and basically it was you know kind of three days in bed a week, and then two days in bed a week, and one day in bed a week, and now like a nap here and there, and that's basically been it. So it's just been wow. this kind of gradual step up. Man, that's awesome. I, I'm, I mean, there's there's a big story here that affects all of us, but just for you and your wife, that is freaking great, man. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. So, uh, man, I feel like uh, I feel like there's all kinds of questions that I would ask if I if I uh, if, I, if I was a doctor, but I'm not. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess the bigger the bigger thing that I'm thinking about is just how how many other cases like this there are in the economy where um, where medicine is just getting completely wrecked. Uh, it's, um, yeah. Well, I, I think I it's know. like with the, it's like with the EpiPen thing, right? Where they, you know, it, it's, it's not even under patent anymore. It's just it, it, the, uh, I don't even know what you would call that, but the, the conglomerate of uh, drug companies have decided not to manufacture it and allow one person to manu manufacture the, the brand. And I think there's a generic too. And then, um, have you seen like the, uh, the bio anarchist movement? You guys yeah. Heard? I was just going to ask you about that. So I, I spoke at hackers Congress on the Bitcoin threat model. And one of the guys that uh, spoke was on this, uh, part of this biohacking group and their goal is to, I believe, take the, the six most expensive medicines available in the world and publish how you can produce them yourself, uh, over the next year. Um, and they have, they have done quite a bit already where they've, They've uh, showed how to create different devices to uh, to synthesize different drugs, but that was one of the things that I was going to ask about. Do you think? Uh, do you, do you know enough about the process? I mean, I know that if you take like skin cells and you put them in a petri dish, you're going to end up with a few more skin cells. Um, is is the process pretty difficult that they're going through, or is it something you think people could uh, hack at home? I think the process they're going through right now is difficult because basically they. Because because they have they have to get the cord blood at a, at a certain period of time, right? Within a few hours of the birth, and then they have to screen it for diseases, and then you know test the blood type, and then there's this is what they told me that there's like one in thirty seven samples that are this kind of generic enough stem cell that will actually work. So the raw material seems to be in making sure it's not harmful. It's not going to carry diseases along, you know, along through your supply chain seems to be the, the biggest stop to, to that. Um, I think and it, it sounds things. like the, I was just going to say, it sounds like when they, when they do get a batch of stem cells that look good, they can't replicate those in, indefinitely or they wouldn't continue to harvest. Obviously they just, they just continue right. to replicate those. I, I that that that's a question I've I, I've been meaning to ask and I haven't really gotten a solid answer for it because that I think that would be the thing is if you could just if you just had one core stem cell and then you were able to just keep replicating it indefinitely, you know that that would that would be a, that would be a good business model I would think. Yeah, there there are definitely things like that. I remember when I first got introduced to Infowars, it was this uh, they're putting baby you know aborted fetuses in Pepsi for flavoring story, and uh, that was obviously you know uh, nonsense. But but the real story was that they which was interesting um, and you know still disturbing was that they actually were using. Um, I'm going to try to remember. I, th I think that they were using taste buds from as part of this uh, flavor testing process. Like it didn't actually go into the Pepsi, but they were somehow using taste buds that were all from one of six fetuses. Um, and there's a lot of medical research that they have, you know, colonies of uh, uh, cells that came from uh, like six aborted fetuses that were back in the 70s. So like thousands of studies have been done and they're able to just continue to, to grow these things. Um, so there's been, you know, millions or billions of... It's like, 
Frankenstein tongues living forever and chopped up right. in pieces, and they, you know, put drop some different uh, flavoring on it and see how they react kind of thing. Yeah, it was so it's the, the truth <laughs> is much closer to that, which is disturbing that there there are there are these uh, colonies of cells that are used for medical research that all come back, you know, to, to a baby that was aborted in the 70s. Um, but not as disturbing as actually making an ingredient to make the Pepsi taste better, which was yeah. the worst story. Well, so so the, I, I guess the next step, right, in the beyond stem cells and the human cloning thing is to grow organs, right? And so the question would be, you know, J JW, let's say they find out that your kidneys are the best kidneys for your blood type that have ever existed ever. And uh, JW, can we please clone your kidneys and you can license them and we're going to, you know, you're, you'll get a royalty off everyone. And uh, how would you feel, you know, if, if in 300 years from now, they're still clone, growing and cloning your kidneys in a lab? Right. Totally. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. I'd love that because there'd be a lot less dead babies with some of the bitches that would say anything else. I mean, it's, uh, it's a rough world out there. Go to a children's hospital and say that you wouldn't... Uh, you wouldn't be happy to, to have some creepy shit happen if those kids were not going to die and nobody else was going to suffer. Like your, your, uh, your, your standards of what's creepy sci-fi and is unacceptable start getting really, really flexible when you see people actually suffer. Right. And, and so I, I think that, I think that's going to be the next frontier is going to be, um, cloned organs and, yeah, and, awesome. and that kind of thing. I mean, yeah, because you have like, uh, the circles that are running, um, there's a there's a there's a whole thing where if you need to you really need like bad like a like an organ transplant you go to China for it but right those organs are those, go, those organs are coming from live people and basically right. you're you're just saying you know I need a heart transplant and they go okay what type of blood are you oh look we found a heart right you just have to pay, yep. you know we just, you just have to pay us under fifty thousand dollars kind of thing yep. so I mean that that trade already exists and so to say that cloning that organ would be less ethical than the black market that exists to facilitate the, the demand is uh, is kind of upside down which again is yeah. the state state incentivizing the, the wholesale slaughter of people just because you know it, it might be a little bit creepy or we're not all adult enough to talk, have the ethics to debate about how far do we want to take cloning and what should we do with it yeah yeah totally and also uh we don't exist like, don't, don't tell me how far we want to take cloning. If my wife is going to die, I want to do some cloning. And if it doesn't <laughs> yeah. involve hurting anybody else, uh, you know, don't, don't come for me because I'm working on my own nuclear device and cloning <laughs> <you> bastards. <laughs> I'm not actually, for the record, I'm not working on my own nuclear device, YouTube. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to censor this one. Like the Cody Wilson interview. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Man, good stuff. Well, that's actually very hopeful. I think, you know, the depressing side is uh, something that I always get caught up in, I think. And that is look at, look at how, you know, like uh, Cody Wilson, you know, interview, for example, really pissed me off when they censored that um, and all of the censorship that's going on on social media. But the other day, uh, somebody posted that 2,000 uh, small newspapers have gone out of business around the United States. And it just reminded me of the victory, right? Like, yes, we're getting censored, but there's no way that I was going to be able to write a op-ed for a local newspaper. Like, that was never, <laughs> you were never going to see by J.W. Weatherman, you know, why the state shouldn't exist. Uh, but, you know, we can have these conversations on YouTube and uh, even with the two or 300 or four or 500 views that I get um, on these things, it's still probably more people than would have read an article if I published it in, you know, the San Diego times or something. Um, so overall, everything is still getting better. And what's happening is the government is leeching off of this more and more aggressively, but partly because we can afford it and we can put up with it because we're doing so much better. Um, so I hate that they're, you know, destroying medicine uh, to a significant degree in the United States. But in spite of that, I'd still rather be sick today than be sick five years ago uh, or 10 years ago. And I think that's that's the hopeful part that uh, that I have to remind myself of. Yeah, absolutely. And well, and the other thing, your audience, is, I think you attract a very specific type of very in intelligent people and also tastemakers. And so I guess the, you know, the way to get something like this changed is to, you know, look into it, research it for yourself, but to actually disseminate the information that, you know, there's a, there's a medical breakthrough, there's a medical revolution that's, that's being withheld from you. 
and get that out to people. And, you know, hopefully we're still a democracy and enough pressure can be put, you know, put to bear. It seems, it seems like things are kind of moving in the right way, but Totally. You know, it's not it, it, it's it, it, it might it might come down to some senator's wife being really really sick and somebody going well you know if you guys just made stem cells legal you yep. know it, it might be something like that but i think having that information out there is important yeah totally i have a lot of soy boys in the audience that are uh you know they're shopping at trader joe's uh, tomorrow <laughs> so you guys need to know that you could save a lot more money on your food because you wouldn't have to shop at whole foods you could go to uh you know, you could go to the normal grocery store and uh, all you have to do is get stem cells and it'll make your wheat allergy go away. So that's, <laughs> Sad that's, that. that's, that's, the, uh, that's the rumor I'm starting to uh, help accelerate this because that'll, that'll really appeal to my, my particular audience. Okay. Yeah. So the average person pays $2,600 a year uh, in food costs, but that's probably not the kombucha socialist. They probably are three times that with all the specialty foods. So that's $6,000. So that's uh, what four. So pay once, you know, cry once, spend the 26 grand and then cut your food bills. Tonight. Totally. And then, you know, when you go and you, you go to the, the uh, little burger place and you ask for a gluten-free bun, you won't have your food spit in by the cooks that are disgusted by you. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's good. It's good on all fronts. So, uh, but no, I mean, seriously, there, I'm sure there are some, like all of us are screwed up in some way or will be screwed up in some way in the future um, or have a family member that's suffering. So um, I'm sure that we're going to hear more and more stories of uh, people that look into it and, uh, and go do it. Um, I can think of at least two family members that I'm thinking, yeah, I wonder if, I wonder if this wouldn't be a bad idea to uh, give it a shot, especially if the side effects are really, uh, really not, you know, there, there's not a lot of side effects because it's, uh, you know, biological. Yeah, there's basically the side effect is like very immediate and it's about a week. You feel like you have a very mild flu. And then that kind of goes away. But if if you're if whatever's ailing you, the like you know like Ash, her Hashimoto's was very bad, you know the inflammation that she had from it went, went away really quick. And she's like, I really don't care about feeling like I have the flu because I haven't felt this good in three years. Right. So it's you know it was it was kind of it's very negligible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of auto. I'm sure. That, I think Mel Gibson had a knee thing, right? But. Um, there's so many people that are suffering from autoimmune stuff like fibromyalgia or, uh, I don't know, there's, there's a, there's a ton of, I, you know, gluten allergies, I think are autoimmune. I think all food allergies by definition are autoimmune. Um, so yeah, there's gotta be a lot of, uh, potential applications there. Um, do you know if the cost has been coming down? Uh, was it more expensive a year ago or what's, what's the status on that? Cause 26 grand is still a lot of money. Uh, if it gets closer to six grand, I think there you'll have a hundred times more people doing it. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Um, it, uh, I, I will I will come back to you with that information later because the idea is that you know we have a couple other family members who want to do it now. If she wants to go back, I want to go back, and so they're telling me you know trying to negotiate for a bulk discount, but <laughs> so we'll see we'll see if they if they're flexible on the price or or anything like that. But yeah, um, yeah. At that point, I was just ready to pay it. So right. Totally. Yeah. I think two of the things, the other thing that I'm really curious about is like just what the cost has been doing over time. Has it been going down or going up? Um, I could imagine that it's going up after all of the attention that the Joe Rogan interview brought to it. And if it's one organization that's doing a good job, you know, they're, they're going to have a lot more demand. It's going to be hard for them to scale uh, rapidly. So um, yeah, I could see it going up. But the other thing that I'm really wondering about is um, how, what does the technology look like for replicating this? And, you know, why do they have to keep reharvesting? If, uh, if you end up finding that out, we'll throw it in the show notes too. Yeah, I, I will. I will look into it. And, um, and for anybody who's thinking about applying, um, they, I guess we, I talked to him about the Joe Rogan effect and all that. And basically they got deluged with a lot of just very low quality, um, information, you know, just low quality inqu inquiries, you know, people want to kick the tires or just talk to them. Um, if, if somebody actually has, if you, if you have like all your medical records and, you know, if it's a shoulder injury or whatever, you have scans and everything kind of ready to go on a file, uh, you could just DM me on Twitter and I'll hook you up with one of the patient coordinators. And if you just send them the stuff, like what they need to look at, they can either say, yes, we can help you or no, we can't, 
and you'll get a really fast response instead of awesome. the kind of Joe, Joe Rogan kind of dude weed guys who are just like, hey man, like, can I get in there for like three grand? I want to be a UFC fighter. <laughs> Yeah. Will this help me grow a horn on my forehead? Because I want to be able to have one. Yeah. I imagine. Um, awesome. Well, that's actually really encouraging that you're you're uh, that they're they're not so overwhelmed that you could actually get some quality information out of them and they, they have time to engage like that. What's your uh, what's your Twitter handle? It's uh, my name at John Grafe, J O H N G R E F is in Frank E. Awesome. So awesome. Yeah, so hit him up if uh, if you've got questions for him. Um, it's pretty pretty incredible that uh, you know the way that a lot of people are going to hear about this is from a guy in a mask. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have some cool stories about people that go down there and uh, and feel better. Um, and you know, I'm so glad that your wife's doing better, man. That's that's really incredible. Um, so thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. I mean, thanks for taking the time to just jump on here and and chat. Um, and uh, yeah, man, yeah. this is exciting. It's very exciting. Um, okay, uh, any any other uh, any other things that you wanted to to mention uh, that you think people should know about? Uh, I think yeah, just buy guns and Bitcoin. Oh, uh, there you go. Yep, because that's how we get access to medical care. Nobody wants to screw with us too much because we're just too dangerous. We're not worth robbing, and uh, we're not worth keeping keeping uh, you know from getting access to decent decent medicine because um, we're dangerous. Uh, good stuff. Uh, awesome. Thank you for awesome. me on, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Uh, last thing I want to say is check out mathbot.com. Um, we would love to separate. Um, Money in state, which is uh, what Bitcoin's all about. Uh, private defense in the state, which is what having guns are all about. And uh, you know, hopefully, we'll be able to separate medicine and state soon enough. But MathBot's mission is to separate school and state. So, anything you guys can do to help us get the word out, we are going after the crown jewel of the state education system and their propaganda machine, which is mathematics. Um, if you go out to MathBot.com, you can. Uh, immediately start programming a robot to solve math problems. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the stories that we're getting back are constantly, you know, I introduced this to my niece and three hours later she was programming recursive functions and we thought she was done before. Um, so do stuff like that, uh, share the word as much as possible. And, uh, you know, let's inoculate some, uh, some little guys from the state convincing them that they're not brilliant because they probably are. Thanks a lot guys. And we will catch you next time.